So, now what remains to be shown is that R has a closed graph. Okay. Now, go back and see what is the definition of a graph of a set valued map. Well, a graph is y comma z such that z belongs to R of y okay, and y, y belongs to y. Okay, it is all those all of the, this whole thing this cloud of points here was the graph. This graph has to be shown to be a closed set which means what if I take a sequence of points in this set that converges to some point then the limit should also be in this set. Okay, which means I what I and remember R itself is a tuple of best response is a Cartesian product of best responses. So, if I take basic what am I taking then uh, when I take a sequence of points I take a sequence of y's I take and a corresponding best responses to the y minus i's from that sequence. Okay. So, I take a sequence of y's here and I take and corresponding to that I am also taking for each y I take a z belonging to r of y which means I am taking a best one best response for each player. This is my sequence. This sequence suppose converges to some point. Okay. Question is: Is that point such that the y the, the the y coordinate of that is in in capital Y and its limit is also a best response? Okay. So that's all that we need to show. Okay. So all right. So now let's come to part three, which is showing that R has a closed graph. Now, what we need to show is we need to show that if So, what we will do is we can actually go again step by step. We will first show R i as a closed graph. Before we show R as a closed graph, we say R, R i has a closed graph for every i and then because it is a Cartesian product once again we will get uh, the closed graph property will transfer also to the Cartesian product. Okay. Now, that, that part is, uh, is fairly standard, but I will uh, let us just do the R i part first and then after that we can uh, uh, you know, I, it, uh, you can you will see how it will follow for uh, for uh, for R as well. Okay, okay. So show that if we will show R I has a closed graph. Okay, we need to show this that if if you have a y minus i k converging to some y minus i and a y i k sequence converging to some y i, okay, such that each y i k is a best response to y minus i k. then y i has to be a best response to y minus i. So, what, what do we need to show? We need to show that if, if you take a sequence like this y minus i k tending to y minus i and y i k tending to y i and where y i k is a best response to y minus i k, then the limit, the limit y i is also a best response to y minus i, right. Okay. Now, to do this let us do the following. So, let us fix some fix y i let us fix a y i dash in capital Y. Okay. Now, if you uh, yeah, so I am fixing this y i dash in capital Y. Now, since y i k is a best response to y minus i k, I have this property. I have that j i of y i k is better than playing. So, this is better than playing y i dash 
assuming others still play y minus i k. So, if I fix I am fixing a y i dash some 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 particular strategy here. Now, y i k is a be, y i k is a best response to y minus i k which means it is better than playing y i dash ok in response to y minus k. while others play y minus k I would want to play uh, player I wants to play y i k. So, this is better than since this is a best response this is better than playing y i dash ok. Now, this is true for every point k along that sequence ok. This is true for every point k along the sequence ok. Now, so then what we can do is now take limit as take k going to infinity I fix a y i dash. So, y i dash does not move with k ok. So, I take the limit as k tends to infinity tell me what do I get when I take the limit. So, we just said that j i is actually a polynomial right j i was this polynomial. So, it is therefore, a continuous function of its argument. It is a polynomial in y 1 to y n. So, it is therefore, continuous in y 1 to y n. So, therefore, when I take this limit here, this the, when I take the limit here as k tends to infinity, I limit k tends to infinity here. this is going to be limit as k tends to infinity y i dash comma y minus k i k. Now, what is since j i is continuous as a function of its arguments this limit basically goes inside ok. So, what I will get here is that j i here I am going to get j i of the limit which is y i comma y minus i that is less than equal to j i of y i dash comma y minus i. Is this clear? Now, this remember I did this for a fixed fixed y y i dash, but then this can be done for every y i dash. I can repeat repeat this procedure for every y i dash, which means that I have this particular statement here. This actually holds not just for the y i dash that I did, this holds for uh, for every y i dash. In other words, this is true for every y i dash. Now, if this is true for every y i dash what does this inequality basically say? It is saying that y i is a best response to y i dash uh, y, y minus i right. So, this is effectively saying that y i is a best response to y minus i ok. So, once again let us see what we did we, we took a sequence y minus i y minus i k comma y i k y i k was the best response to y minus i k for every k. Their limit was y minus i and y i and what we showed was the limit in the limit also this best response property holds. So, y i is the best response to y minus i ok all right ok. So, what does this mean? This means that if you take a sequence of points that are in the graph of r i their limit is also in the their limit is also in the graph of r i ok. These points y i comma y minus i y i k comma y minus i k were in the graph of r i because uh, y i because of this reason because of y i k being a best response to y minus i k ok. So, which means therefore, that the graph of which means r i is closed ok. Now, we can do this collect we can do this collectively also for r because r is itself a is, is itself a product of r of the r i's. The the argument is a little bit subtle I do not want to uh, sort of confuse you, but essentially what you do is you do it for the first player then by taking some sequence like you take some sequence do it for the first show that it is closed for the first player then you can take a subsequence of that sequence along that subsequence do it for the second player and then take a subsequence or further subsequence of that do it for the third player and so on. And in short you will be able to show that the limit uh, the limiting point is actually in the graph of r uh, the uh, r itself. So, in short the graph from here you will basically get that 
when the graph of R i is closed, the graph of R is also closed. Okay. So, graph of R is closed. Okay. So, now, so again, let us go back and check what Kakudani was asking us to do. He, this is what we have therefore, now accomplished. So, now we have, we have ticked off 1, 2, 3, 4 and so, so hence we have from, from Kakutani there exists a fixed point for R which means there exists a Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, this basically shows that there is always a Nash equilibrium if we move to mixed strategies, which means again what we have now pushed the theory of games even further. It earlier we, we have we, we did not have we the way we started was we tried to solve games using dominance, but then dominance did not you could not always eliminate strategies and get to a solution. We then moved to mixed, uh, mixed strategies, we looked in zero sum games, there we found that there is a saddle point. But then that is not all the class of games, there is a much more general class of games which is non-zero sum games and over there also there is a Nash equilibrium. So, there is something that we can call as a solution for a game for uh, for all of these games now. Okay. So, what this is effectively done is we, we started off with this idea that you could stay, uh, take a, a game and we could come up with some kind of a notion of what we can say is the outcome of this game. Right. But for that notion uh, to actually work out, it needed to satisfy the mathematics that are that it that we specify it with. But you know, a pure strategy did not, and that became a hurdle. But a mixed strategy does. Uh, there are two things I should mention. First is the, we assume just finitely many strategies, so this can be generalized vastly. Okay, you can allow for more general strategy spaces and so on. Okay, this is just uh, a beginner level proof for for uh, for you guys to see is there mathematically much more general results are known. Secondly, the Nash's contribution is not the proof, it is the concept. Okay, the proof was not, the proof actually is uh, you know fairly elementary. In fact, if you have some experience in uh, analysis and fixed point theory, you can more or less see that such a point should exist. But why should you be looking for such a point is the question. Okay, therefore, the concept is the important contribution and not that now, of course, you need to back it up with the proof of existence, otherwise the concept becomes vacuous. But, uh, but that, uh, but the, the, but proof by itself is not the achievement. Okay. So, uh, so let, let me also uh, mention one other point which kind of came up as we were doing this proof. We saw that R is convex valued, if you, that which means that uh, and each Ri was the solution of a linear program. Since it is a solution of a linear program and since these and look at the constraints of the linear program, the constraints are that you know it is just a probability distribution. Then exactly the same thing that we saw in the Sherlock Holmes problem or in general in uh, zero sum games holds here also. So, assuming the others play y minus i, the optimal thing for player i to play would there would always be a pure strategy that is optimal for player i to play because he will obviously pick the one that gives that has the largest weight or the, in this case the minimum weight right because he is minimizing right the, and that is because these these constraints are all they just define a probability distribution. So, effectively is just taking a weighted combination. So, the y minus i is in response to those y minus i the player should uh, has always a pure strategy best response ok. But any, uh, but in general there will be more than one pure strategy best response and any combination of convex combination of those pure strategies is also a best response. The thing that what happens in a Nash equilibrium is, is essentially that the other players, their mixed strategies are such that a player becomes indifferent between choosing his pure strategies, between a, between a subset of his pure strategies. The other, the weights become adjusted, get adjusted in such a way that I can now respond with any convex, any weighted combination of these of a certain set of pure strategies. Okay. 
but that doesn't mean that I can actually play whatever I want because I need to also choose my pure strategy in such a way that the others become indifferent in the same way. Right? So, everyone basically mutually confuses the other, you know, kind of uh, uh, or, or uh, confuses or bamboozles the other, other player by making them indifferent between a subset of pure strategies. And that ambiguity is essentially where, from where the, uh, an equilibrium sort of arises. Okay, for where so each player is indifferent between this. So he, so he, there's a particular point, but there is one particular point that makes the others also indifferent, and and so on and so forth. And this holds for any n, any n players. Okay, so this is this is the structure uh, uh, that always plays out in a Nash equilibrium. So in fact, this also suggests um, you know s some ways of finding a Nash equilibrium. So, for example, if you wanted to, if you wanted to find an Nash equilibrium, okay, uh, say for example, if I just wrote out, let us write out one game here. So, this is player 1, player 2. So, this is non-zero sum. So, I need two matrices to define, uh, to write out this game. So, this is so again for player 1, player 2. Okay. So, I am now looking. So, suppose this is matrix A and this is matrix B. Okay. And suppose I write out strategies for the players as y1, y2, z1, z2. So, again y1, y2, z1, z2 then I am effectively by for a, by a Nash equilibrium I am looking for y star z star such that y star transpose a z star is less than equal to y transpose a z star for all y and y star transpose b z star is less than equal to y trans y star transpose b z for all z. Right. Now, if you think about how you would go about computing this, essentially what you would now need, if you see what you would need is that, uh, you know, you need to find, uh, you need to solve for these equations and in each, each time you go about solving them, what, so you could try the following, see for example, you could say, well, I, let me write my y star as y1 star comma 1 minus y1 star and z star as z1 star comma 1 minus z1 star. Now, unlike before, we do not have this security type property anymore. So, now earlier we were looking, we were able to compute y separately and z separately. Now, y and z have to be found together. So, it is a simultaneous solution of these equations, these inequalities, right. So, you have to find a z star in such a way that y star is optimal for this linear program, the, fir the, the first linear program for the player 1 and, and, such, and, a y, and a y star such that z star is optimal for the second linear program, right. So, it is the simultaneous solution that needs to be found. Now, one way of, uh, one possible way of doing this is to say that, well, let us posit that each player makes the other guy indifferent between all his pure strategies. In this case, there are just p two pure strategies. So, let him make him make him indifferent between both those pure strategies. Okay. So, suppose you say, well, z star should be such that player 1 gets the same payoff from both pure, uh, from, uh, from either of his pure strategies. Okay. So, that means 1 z, z 1 star plus 0 times 1 minus z1 star, this should be equal to the payoff that he gets from the, his second pure strategy. That, that would now be equal to 2 z1 star minus 1 into 1 minus z1 star. And y star should be such that it does the same for the other player. So, y star is such that if you look at the payoff of the second, uh, the second player should now get indifferent, right. So, it is 3 y1 star plus 0 times 1 minus y1 star 
that should be equal to 2 times y1 star plus 1 into 1 minus y1 star. Is this clear how I got this? So, this this one comes from equating these two ok the expected payoff from uh, uh, from this two and this one comes from equating equating these two this here. Is this clear? So, now now what you have is actually just some linear equations which you can now solve to get the to uh, to find y 1 star and z 1 star and then you know from there you will get your answer ok. Now, the reason we could do this is because there were just two pure strategies for each player right and therefore, here we had to just make so you get just two equations like this, but suppose there were m pure strategies for you know for uh, for each player and there were capital N many players right. Then each of these will not become linear equations, these will now become this will all have the product of all the other players because the all the other players together make this guy indifferent right. So, there will be a product of the pro probability distributions from the other n minus 1 uh, players and likewise there would be a product here for for uh, all players except for this player now and so on. And you would have several equations because you are equating the the payoff from each pure strategy right. 1 equal to 2, 2 equal to 3, 3 equal to 4 and so on because you are asking all of them to be indifferent between all those pure strategies. Here there are just 2, so you have just done 1 equal to 2 ok. So, that becomes therefore, then becomes a problem of solving for a solution of a high degree polynomial set of polynomial equations. This so, but now if you can solve those then you can get a Nash equilibrium there. But that need not be the only way of solving because it is possible that the player has become indifferent between some subset of them like not all m uh, strategies, but some subset like these indifferent between 1st, 7th and 10th suppose for example or he is indifferent between 3rd and 4th only something like that. So, what effectively then the search of pure, um, Nash equilibrium then becomes even more complicated because you need to write such equations by first selecting which strategies are to be chosen. Okay. So, so then it becomes a prob it becomes a huge complicated combinatorial search. So, in general computing the Nash equilibrium is actually quite a hard thing to do ok. So, it is not a that is it is not that uh, straightforward to compute a Nash equilibrium even in these simple in, in these simple cases because effectively you would have to do a combinatorial search by checking which subsets of strategies can you make every player indifferent between and so on. And then after deciding that you have to solve a bunch of polynomial equations. So, it is it's not that easy to do, but nonetheless the point is not about uh, the computing something does not uh, be, being hard does not make it invalid ok. The, the, the validity of the Nash equilibrium stands on much higher grounds than just the computation hard, computational hardness ok. All right. So, uh, so with this I think I will uh, we can conclude our uh, our study of uh, of Nash equilibrium uh, in this kind of sense I can maybe do one example next time. But for from there from here onwards then we will now go again deeper into information ok. We will look at uh, many other issues such as communication in games and so on ok.